Governor LePage was with the Vice President this morning, and according to the Governor, the CMS numbers would increase Maine's funding by, he says, 44 percent. Is that right? Well, first of all, let me say that the numbers are all over the place, depending on whose analysis that you look at. But this is a case where the federal government would be giving with one hand and taking away with the other. When you look at the impact of the cuts in the traditional Medicaid program, they amount to approximately a billion dollars over the next decade. And that more than offsets the amount that Maine would gain as a non-expansion state under the Affordable Care Act formula that is in the Graham-Cassidy bill. In addition, it's important to know that the Graham-Cassidy Affordable Care Act uh, grant, block grant, ends after 2026. There's this huge cliff. So one analysis that I saw this morning estimates that after this next decade, Maine actually would lose $2 billion in federal funding. Then why the hard sell from the LePage administration? You'd have to ask uh, the governor. I welcome the input from all of my constituents, and I am just trying to get a handle on the numbers, a handle on the impact on premiums, to better understand uh, what consumer protections would remain in place and what would be lost. And based on my very close reading of the bill, I'm very concerned. I don't think it's a coincidence that the initial spreadsheet showing what each state would get under uh, Graham Cassidy has been removed from the website of Senator Cassidy because there were so many issues and errors in it. So it, what this really tells us is if you're going to make fundamental changes in an entitlement program that has been law for more than 50 years. You need to have extensive hearings. You need to hear from actuaries. You need to hear from health care providers. You need to hear from all of the stakeholders. And only then can you vet it enough to be assured of what the ramifications would be. I am waiting to make a final decision on the bill until the CBO analysis comes out on Monday. But what I'm hearing there concerns me as well because CBO is saying that it is being given insufficient time to do an analysis of the effect on coverage, on how many people will lose their health insurance if the Graham-Cassidy bill goes through. Keep in mind that we already have 28 million Americans without health insurance. In the earlier versions of this bill, the range was in the tens of millions of people who would become uninsured. So that is of great concern to me. I have said from the beginning that the Affordable Care Act it needs substantial reform. There are problems with it. It has caused premiums to increase more than they otherwise would have. We have uh, states where there are very few choices of insurance carriers. We're seeing a narrowing of networks so that families can't make uh, the choice of their own doctor or hospital to go to. Those are all serious problems with the current law. It's also too rigid in its application. States should have more flexibility. So the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, on which I serve, has had four excellent hearings in the last two weeks to look at the flaws in the law and how we could stabilize the market and bring down premiums. We were on our way to producing a bipartisan bill that would have addressed some of these problems. It would have been an initial bill that I hoped would be followed by other bills. And unfortunately, uh, the, the Graham-Cassidy bill has derailed 
that effort, at least temporarily. And I think that's very important. One of the problems with Obamacare is it was passed on a straight party line vote. Uh, without a single Republican supporting it, our ideas were not welcomed. And that's one reason it's been a flawed law. I don't think the Republican Party, my party, should make the same mistake that was made when the Affordable Care Act was passed. We need input from both sides of the aisle and from experts to make sure that we're fixing the flaws in the current law without creating enormous problems for some of the most vulnerable people in our state and our country. This is not the first Republican health care bill this year. You've gotten pressure before on the previous votes, but once again, President Trump, Vice President Pence, Governor LePage, just to name three, are all clearly making it clear they want you to support this bill. Bill, how does the pressure on you this time around compare to what you've had previously? Are you getting it more, more fiercely this time than ever before? Yes. Um, it, the governor in particular has um, stepped up his efforts and um, it, the there is a lot of pressure, but you know, I've had a lot of pressure on a lot of different issues throughout the time I've been in the Senate. And in the end, I just have to do what I think is right for the people of Maine and for our country. And if, if I don't do that, then I can't look at myself in the mirror. So in the end, I just have to make the best decision based on the most data that I can get together um, on this bill as well.